All right, I have unmuted. <laughs> it's it's been a while since I've actually uh, done an actual presentation. Hi. Okay, I'm going to deafen myself and mumble so that I don't get distracted by backstage chatter. Hello, everyone. Okay, so where are we? Questions, questions, questions. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, how easy would it be for someone else to reuse the Emacs conf strips and config to do a conf of their own? Uh, like everything else, I have no idea if things actually work until somebody does it for you know to get everything to run on a computer that isn't my computer and with assumptions that aren't my assumptions so i have no idea but optimistically i have mo put most of the emacs conf things uh, like the like emacs conf the name of the conference and things like that in variables so if theoretically someone were to run an org mode conference or something like that it might be possible to reuse all this code we'll see uh I don't know if it's going to be easy. I don't even know if it's going to be possible, but it might be fun to try. What tools would I like to exist in Emacs land to help with preparing the conference next time? Well, uh, I've already been thinking about adjustments that I want to make the sub ed so that the audio synchronization issues that we sometimes have with FFmpeg can be something that I can flag and maybe fix even while I'm watching a, watching a video. Wouldn't that be kind of anyway? But also, as much as possible, I like to leave the actual FFmpeg audio and visual tinkering with to other people like Leo, whose patience is slightly more than mine, uh, because audio is. I, I still don't have the patience to sit for it. You can tell I, I talk really, really quickly. I'm still trying to squeeze everything into however little focus time I actually have. So uh, it would be kind of nice to use that. Um, Emacs is already doing quite a ton uh, and stuffing more multimedia processing and other fun things into it might be interesting. Who knows? Oh, the, the, the other thing that I would really love to have that people always ask for uh, is a way from Emacs to interact with the Etherpad. The Etherpad API, it seems very granular. Like you can set the HTML of a pad, but you can't actually just append stuff to it. And I was trying to get something that could take, you know, questions from IRC and automatically push them into the pad, uh, even from like an ERC bot or whatever, but uh, no go. Uh, so if someone were to figure out some kind of CRT thingy, sorry, CRDT thing where we can collaboratively edit the document, that I think is like the number one request that people always have with, around EmacsConf. Uh, that would be really cool uh, to to do more of the conference itself from within Emacs. Um, I I don't know if actually well we have an org file now that launches the MPV from Emacs. But if you want to have like an X widget or something else watching the conference from within Emacs itself, I think that would also be really cool. Uh, yes, and then you know uh, other other fun stuff. Okay, how can speakers and viewers help make preparing for next year's Emacs Conf even more fun for the organizers? Well, you know, I love it when not only do the speakers do all that work to 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 uh, to prepare their talk, um, but lately people have actually even been volunteering to caption their own talks, uh, and that's that's great because then you know they they know the words that they use, and if I can show them the the, the workflow that we have so that they can do it very efficiently because. Uh, there's all these 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 wonderful things that I do now with subweb waveform and uh, and and Aeneas for like the forced alignment so we can get timestamps from text and all these other fun things uh, that make getting a transcript or editing the captions fun and easy. Uh, that makes it easier for not only speakers to contribute captions for their own talks, but also interested volunteers who, as mentioned, get early access to all the talks and can watch it at little leisure. Uh, and uh, and it's you know nice perk there. Definitely should try that. I do have some uh, sample demonstrate uh, sample videos of how we use SubEd, but of course, in the process of shoving like thirty or forty talks maybe 30 talks through it for Emacs Gone. So this is like the stress test season for ESA for Zubed, which is great. I ended up adding more features 
So, uh, so one of my big to do's afterwards is I have to document the different workflows for things like, okay, you've got a script, you can use WDIF to get word diffs so that you can take the subtitles and compare them with the original script and see where the misrecognized words are. Uh, and that's great. Uh, or you can, uh, you can use subword waveform to start adjusting things. Or like, for example, if there's a synchronization issue, uh, I can now like middle click on the on a subtitle where I want the subtitle to actually start and then move all of the subtitles to start at that point. So it's it's getting to be a really elaborate tool and I definitely need to document that and stick all the, you know, stick all the uh, blog post links into the readme so that people can find this in the future. So it's very, 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 you know, very, very nifty. And the reason why we do this is because, well, well, personally, I have a hard time sitting and watching videos. I like to be able to just jump to the interesting parts uh, or watch it at three times speed, which MPV lets me do. And uh, and the text makes it a lot more searchable, which is fantastic. Uh, and also because, you know, if you've got all these interesting variable names and uh, key, key bindings and whatever, and the automatic subtitles just don't do the right thing. So it's nice that people do the captioning. So, uh, so yeah, so so that's one thing that people can help with. Captioning is, is always very interesting. And the other thing that people can do is uh, take the inspiration that you get from EmacsConf and from the ideas that you have when you're working with Emacs and suggest talks for next year's EmacsConf. And it doesn't have to be a super fancy, you know, nobody else needs to go out and do a really professional looking video uh even though howard has set the bar this you know it's pretty high you don't have to do that kind of thing it can be just you and a screen or even just the screen and you talking about the, this cool thing that you learned and it could be a video or it could be a blog post it could be something else uh and that those those things are are fantastic because they inspire people to see what's possible with emacs so that's another big thing that people can do to to help uh, and then, you know, they're, they're sharing the word about it. So if you saw something that you really liked, if you write a blog post about it or a tweet or a toot or whatever else you want to do, you make a reaction video, that helps other people discover that stuff. Not just today, not just next week, but, you know, even later as they search for these, these words uh, that... Like, as people search for ideas using words that are not necessarily the ones in the video, the, you describing things in other ways helps with the uh, search engine optimization, or you know, not really. It's just people finding stuff, which is amazing. So yes, please write about the cool things that you've you've seen and what you'd like to uh, to uh, tell other people about. Such so, suggesting ideas for talks, yes, uh, um, making talks, just all sorts of wonderful things. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, could you elaborate on the workflow that goes on in your mind for when approaching these things? Do you start with an Emacs org solution right off the bat at this point when faced with a task? Are there some conscious steps involved from early ideas to automations of the kind you just showed? Mostly it starts with, okay, uh, we got to do this thing. So I have this like to do, uh, to do's. And sometimes I like in the week before the conference, I have to, I have to think, okay, is this a, like a top priority thing that I, I can do before the conference? Or is it something that I can, I, 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 we can still do the conference without doing, so I have to just postpone it until afterwards. So some prioritization happens. But a lot of times it's like, okay, you know, like this, there's a thing that I need to do here. I don't know how to figure it out. Let me start an org babble block and start sketching out something, you know, custom function or whatever else. And then say, okay, you know, hey, that, that looks kind of useful. Let, let me see if I can generalize that. And then let me stick it into the library so that I can find it next year. Uh, and that's basically how it goes. It just goes, it, it just like, I have a thing that I need to do. If it's, if I'm going to do it more than once, or actually, even if I'm going to do it, you know, once I try to automate it just so that I can understand it and and then I can I can I can squeeze it into like the 15 minutes I actually have uh, and I can pause and I can pick it up back, pick it up again. And the code is still there and my notes are still there. Uh, and then every little bit of the, every every little step like that builds up. So I can write a short function today, and then tomorrow when the kiddo is asleep, I can write a little bit more of that, and and so it just goes on from there. Uh, and then I just stuff that all in there. Uh, how well does this approach allow for other organizers to do individual customizations to their liking while still being able to collaborate effectively? Um, we've actually split things up fairly neatly in the sense that 
for this year, for example, most of, most everyone else was super busy. So I did all the, the well, I did the heavy lifting up until uh, people were available and then they jumped in with the audio normalization. Thank you very much, Leo, for doing all of that stuff and the hosting and all the other things. So I tend to do most of the Emacs list fiddling with and the shell scripting and, and stuff like that, aside from the FFmpeg incantations, which are too arcane for me to even think about. Uh, and then in the course of watching me deal with like, oh no, this video is not playing. And then they see the commands that I'm using, uh, like like play and then, uh, you know, play a world, which is the idea that the talk uh, that we were having a hard time with or MPV or whatever. Um, then the other organizers kind of just picked that up by osmosis because we didn't even have time to do dry runs or training this year. So it's, you know, it's just... Uh, there's not much collaboration in the sense that I'm just basically saying, okay, th th these are the scripts that I'm going to write for myself, uh, and you all figure out how to work with that. <laughs> what was the hardest problem you encountered in organizing or running the conference this year, and how do you deal with it? Oh, the constant, constant problem with Emacs is that there's so many amazing ideas. Like I want to, I want to fit into the time, and then afterwards, like I'm, you know, Sasha, do not mess with production the day before the conference. You're going to save that for after the conference, right? So that's the hardest part. It's just saying, okay, yes, that's an idea. I'm going to put it that in the inbox. We're going to maybe get that to next to get to that next year. But right now, these are the things that I need to do in order to get the conference off the ground reasonably. Uh, you know, reason. You know, reasonably the uh, reason in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so earlier in the conference, it was you know, then I can be like, okay, oh, you know, what if we do this? What if we run everything off a cron tab instead of using Emacs tramp timers? Wouldn't that be great? Uh, and then I can explore all those those crazy ideas. But then as we get closer and closer to the date, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm gonna like just capture the idea and deal with it later. So that's really really hard for me. Year to your growth in attendance and the, and after the conference video watching, uh, the the growth. Well, first thing, um, there is uh, like absolute growth in the kind of the the quantity of things that people are sharing. I, I have a blog post about this uh, that talks about like a number of minutes of talks, and it, it it's going up like. Last year, we did two tracks because I couldn't fit everything in one day. And this year, we did two tracks, but even then, everything was kind of squished. And I was like trying to find space in the schedule. And if you make it so that next year, we have to figure out three tracks. I think we have a we have another host now, so it might be doable, which is great. Uh, who knows? We'll see. Um, and, and the other interesting thing that I'm seeing in terms of growth is that people are starting to refer to the talks from previous conferences that inspired them. So the evil plan is working in that it is getting people to get cool stuff out of their heads and into videos that have like searchable transcripts uh, and that people can refer to as for inspiration and for showing other people, hey, look, this is what it can do. So that is fantastic growth. The actual numbers, uh, I mean, tends to look at the you know number of simultaneous viewers and uh, every so often, you know, it's kind of nice to go through the uh, YouTube stats or whatever. But that's not so much as a like a, I don't really keep that in mind as much, uh, just because you know, as as long as people are are connecting to the ideas and getting stuff out there, it's a uh, and uh, and uh, being inspired to tinker around more. Then, uh, then it's it's doing the thing. Confidence is is, uh, is working. So where are we now for questions? Oh, I can I can actually uh, I have ERC here. I can find eventually one of my screens has Deb in it. Okay, here we are. Were there other questions? Do, 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 do. Probably, oh, probably in IRC. Do, 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 do. Where's IRC? Dev, Dev, Dev. I, I did try to record things uh, more slowly, and I tried several times, but I really just, I speak very quickly when I get excited, and Emacs is very fun. So it is tough. Oh, yes. OK. So one and ones yes. Uh, da, 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 automated pre present workflows. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. OK, so where are we now for time? Oh, look, it's 4.30. Should we do our closing remarks, or like how are things going over in the other stream? I should find out. Yeah. You yeah, haven't been keeping a cl close eye on the other one, but yeah, I believe that. Um, Yay! Been... Look at that! Good timing! Okay, I have managed to move through the uh, questions. 
Uh, and uh, we can switch over to the closing remarks. How do we do this? Yes. Okay. Okay. We're going to... Oh, wait, people. Okay. People who wanted to ask questions, how do you want to do this? Because there are a lot of people in this one here too. You want to go to the other one? Oh, no, they aren't done yet. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to turn off the cron tab because, of course, I got excited. Okay, so Jacob is still answering questions, which means I get to still answer questions. Now he'll try to be quiet and let people in the BBB room speak up if they want to. Okay. That means... People Some more TV ideas that I had on the Emacs conference is you could have like a little uh, Emacs starter config just for like the Emacs conference where you have EMMS playlist, an IRC help cheater function to help get you into IRC, into ERC. And then the to do states that I was talking about before. Uh, so you can say, I'm watching this one. I want to rewatch this one, but I'm going to skip it because I'm watching something else. Um, I used the uh, hyper or the hyperbole package to go straight to the web pages for, uh, to all the either paths. But you could also have uh, some quick functions to go into a CRDT buffer, hosted buffer, where all the org mode either pad document documents would be and then that would and then that would get everybody using emacs and then they could all be chatting with each other with crdt with uh controlling emacs i don't know how the sub stuff i don't know if you could get the sub stuff in there working but yeah it could be a good way of getting it all wrapped up together and also uh mcron if you ever looked at that versus cron, mcron is is configured in elisp and then you can also write some custom functions in the middle of your cron so maybe you could make some like conditional things where you can start or stop it um and like one of the differences is if your computer reboots it can start up and say oh i'm supposed to run this cron job at this time and then just do the correct thing rather than losing the state randomly because your computer lost power. Thanks for those recommendations. I will add MCron to my list of things to check out. And uh, and yeah, it, it, we we uh, ex we re finally remember to, to publish all those schedules as org and I decided to just spam all the time zones with them, which was fantastic. And now that people have mentioned that this is useful, we get to figure out how to use this to uh, teach people more about what, to, what you can do with org. As you mentioned, at, uh, encouraging them to tag the stuff uh, with you know things that they want to attend gives, gives us the ability to set up an agenda view for them that has the talks that are tagged with those tags. So it's like okay, let's uh, let's um, uh, teach org mode and Lisp in the process of doing things. Okay, there was a question about any chance of an in-person Emacs Conf again someday, uh, and I was actually at the very first Emacs Conf, which was 2013, and uh, and organized in uh, uh, in London to take advantage of the fact that I had a business trip there. Yay! Uh, it was fantastic being in a room with a hundred other people uh, who are all in, really interested in Emacs. Uh, but I'm not traveling like any time for the foreseeable future. So if other people are interested in organizing something like that, I am totally happy to spread the word. It's just, it, it doesn't fit with my current lifestyle, but it, it might fit somebody's. I don't know. We're still we're still uh, just here. <laughs> and I like the virtual conference. It's I really like the fact that we can bring together people from all over the world. I can you know take a look at my schedule with all the time constraints. Okay, I need to put this person in the morning because they're in Australia, and I need to put this person in the afternoon because they're you know from from Vancouver or, or uh, from somewhere else in the, the, the Pacific time zone. Uh, and it's just this this breadth of, of people. What the other thing that I would love to for people to start thinking about is if we could have a virtual conference in other time zones like, so that's easier for people in Asia Pacific or Europe to attend. Uh, and as we're getting the hang of this uh, this cron tab based thing, I think 
we might almost be at the point where I can set it up to run even when I'm sleeping and then other people can figure out, you know, the exception handling. Oh, you know, the stock needs to be restarted. Okay, just play it again and, and scrub around to find the right part, uh, which means we could have replays or we can have like the the Asia Pacific alternate event that we had the other time where some speakers came back online uh, and, uh, and uh and and did did another q a session just for that uh that kind of event uh so those are other cool fun things that would love to be would love you hit would be uh would, would be great uh satellite events someone mentioned in the, in the etherpad uh some people have uh, have been organizing these which are great basically a bunch of people get together in a room or two rooms now because of the tracks and watch emacs conf together so if you have a physical meetup or if you'd like to start one, uh, it's it's basically, you know, do this, uh, maybe have stickers if you have stickers, uh, you know, it's just have everyone come over and hang out and meet people. I don't know, it's a thing. Specifically how to do way. it, I have no idea how to organize these things, but Elaine does, so talk to him. <laughs> Another way of adding multiple tracks is changing it to doing it like to two times a year, Emacs conference. Yeah, yeah. Um, people have mentioned something like that. Uh, it's, uh, or, or the fact that uh, Org often has like a full day of talks by itself, and actually a little bit more than a day now because I've been squeezing things into other tracks. Uh, there has been some potential interest in having an Org Conf. Uh, could be a thing, and, and I'd love to see also. You know, we, we'd love to experiment with other formats. So there could be a you know a bug hunting session or a, or a let's let's use the breakout rooms to split up into little mentoring groups and see how that works. So lots of things that we can do. Uh, they've actually finished over in the gen gen track. So uh, I don't know if people want to very quickly ask questions here or if we go there. Leo has come over here instead. So hello. <laughs> okay, okay, he's joining over here in the other side. Okay. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just about to say I am not hosting anymore. You two do a wonderful job, and I'm happy to just watch. Cool. Yeah, I was gonna yeah add one quick note about any potential like suggestions or recommendations for hosting Emacscom satellites. Is that um. I mean, given that we were an event centered around, uh, you know, Emacs, and you know, Emacs is um, well sort of backed by the Free Software Foundation. If you do reach out to them, they're usually pretty helpful in terms of uh, sending like goodies and stickers and such. So yeah, if you give them a heads up and reach out to them in advance, um, you might well end up with a whole bunch of swag on your hands that you could give out during the satellite. So that's the thing. Well, I just wanted to know, it felt kind of uh, even smoother. I mean, you guys always run a, a nice conference, but it felt smoother this year than ever before, which listening to your talk, Sasha, all the automation that you're doing is uh, pretty incredible. So I think it's paying off. Yay! Even it is very amusing to hear the host say, okay, you know, but we got to wrap up in the next 30 seconds because Sasha's contact is going to go yoink. <laughs> I, I have a person I work with who uh, keeps the trains running on time, shall we say, and like cuts off every meeting like the second that it's supposed to end while somebody's in mid-sentence. And um, I hope we don't get to that point here. <laughs> so do we have any more oh sorry I'm, I'm reverting to the hosting do we have any more questions for MaxConf? although maybe do we want to switch to the other room so that we don't struggle too much to find um organize this stuff on bbb afterwards oh the recording well this is a way to make sure the recording gets online <laughs> but <laughs> uh, we could do that too i don't know what do y'all think I'm personally fine. If we want to stay here right now, the development track is currently uh, streaming this BBB room. Uh, so are we on Gen? So we're going to leave it at this and move into closing remarks if we want.
Oh yeah, just I guess make sure that um, every one of the organizers uh, are here. Uh, I see Flo here. Um, let's see, Corbin, are you here? Can you maybe uh, speak here on BBB or? I'll give some time for Corbin to figure it out. He did figure it out eventually yesterday, so surely today we'll go swimmingly. All right, we're getting everything ready, folks. Okay, so while, uh, while we sort out uh, Corwin, uh, can someone tell him on Mumble, I guess? Because I'm not sure if he's... Anyhow, uh, I, I also want to say uh, that in the Emacs Conf channel, people have been mentioning that the remote stuff has been working for them. And I really do like the way that this means we can have all the videos you know, all prepared, they're captioned, they, you know, we can send them to people, we can post them on the website afterwards, we can bring all these people together who might not be able to convince their companies to fly them somewhere for an Emacs conference. <laughs> and also I can, you know, I can do this kind of prep while having my now seven year old still, you know, be able to wander by and, and whatever, because traveling is really tough. So this is, this is fine. This is cool. I like this. We'll keep doing it. It's definitely playing into the uh, low cost uh, conference, you know, to do it online. So many people can just access it very easily. Uh, all right. So we've, uh, we've messaged Colwyn. Uh, I guess we can get started with Dalim. It should maybe take a minute or two to join us. Uh, should, we get, should I get started with the uh, final words of the day? All right, cool. All right, folks, we made it. We are at the end of the second day of EmacsCon, the second of two days. And the first thing I want to say is first, thank you so much for joining us for this new edition. It's personally my fourth year uh, during the EmacsCon, but when if you go to emacsconf.org and you see the different sessions, you will realize that the first one was in 2013, which happens to be 10 years ago. So we are obviously very excited about all of this and we'll tell you perhaps a little more about what has changed over the last 10 years. Um, as usual, uh, you know, the pre-recorded talks are available right now on a talk page, at least for all those which were pre-recorded. All the ones which happen on Big Blue Button, it will take us a little bit of time to figure out uh, how to, well, when to put them available. We need to do subtitles and all this jazzy stuff. And we'll also upload them to YouTube and other places once we check the audio, especially for the Q and A's, like we need to clean up some of the audios and make sure that we do not publish any personal stuff. Um, all the live Q live talks and Q and A's will do this in the weeks to come. Uh, usually it takes us about one to two months to try to get everything out, but if it takes longer, it's fine. Eventually everything will be there. The one thing we can say is that by Emacscom 20, 20, 2024, when it comes around, Everything should have been uploaded at some point. So that's a, a wide window. Um, so again, uh, and as usual, feel free to spread the word about EmacsConf because, you know, we've been doing this for a while and every year more people show up to, this, to these events and more people watch the videos on YouTube. And it's wonderful to see, you know, our main goal, which is to get cool ideas out of the head of people shared and viewed by so many people. It's always amazing. Uh, also, I would like to ask you personally, what did you like about this conference or what did you like? What do you feel was better than last year? Because it's the feedback is very useful to us. We'd also like to know if you've got any ideas for making things even better. And we've got a general uh, conference discussion slash notes slash community message board, which is pad.emacsconf.org slash 2023. And you can also just mention them. You know, we might open this uh, room for people to join us and chat, although Floey and myself, Europe team, needs to go to bed. So please be mindful of this. If you ask a very interesting question, we will both have to make sacrifices to stay a while longer because you're too damn interesting. Um, now we'd like to move into thanking all the people who make EmacsConf possible. And obviously first, <laughs> we have to thank all the speakers, all the volunteers, the participants, and to all those other people in our lives who make it possible through time and support. Thank you so much for allowing us to run EmacsConf. It wouldn't happen without you and without us, I suppose, because we are included in this. Um, this is conference hosts are myself, Leo Vivier, Amin Bendali, and joining our team of hosts for the first time this year, Flowey Coda. Thank you so much, Flowey. You did a wonderful job.
it's right there. No, it's, damn it. No, I, I can't. I, I can never remember if BB, BBB is flipping stuff. So either one of those directions. Uh, the streams this year, uh, as last year, were managed by Sasha Schwa, obviously, and the check ins by Floby Coder and I'm in with miscell miscellaneous running around by Corwin Brust, who will be joining us uh, momentarily. Uh, apparently, all his USB fails, so he will, he will be with us as soon as he can. It's Bruce. Rhymes with Bruce. Oh. Do oh, I have audio now? Sorry. All right, I'll go to work on my camera. Hi. Hello. Lovely. Okay, I'll keep going. Uh, I also need to thank, well, need, no, I want to thank all the captioning volunteers, the captioners as we call them. You've got uh, Daniel Molina, Bala Ramadoui, uh, Durai, sorry, Bavin Gandhi, Amin Zayad, Yoni Rabkin, who presented uh, one of the talk earlier, Daniel Alejandro Tapia, Hannah Miller, Ken Wang, Jean-Christophe Hellary, uh, and James Howell. Uh, also thanking Jean-Christophe Hellary, Corwin Quillero, Kern, and Amin Bendali for helping with the early acceptance process. Uh, Sasha, uh, do I read this one? It's weird to thank myself. I'm going to pat myself on the back, I guess. Uh, go on, Sasha. <laughs> no, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's fine. Uh, thanks to myself for fiddling with the audio to get things nicely synced. And thanks to myself again and other people we kept the mailing list free from spam. Because I'm not sure what happened since May, but we've been receiving about three to four spam emails. And that was. It just happened all of a sudden, and I was really weirded out by this process. Uh, where was I? OK, thanks to Andrew Ducurti for uh, helping with Whisper processing. Thanks to Ashki Gaekwad for design contribution. Thanks to Yoshin, you know, Grant Shangro, for all the music that we've been using for the last three years at this point, I think. Also, thanks to Rai for the server that we're using for OBS streaming and for processing videos. And also thanks to the free self-refundation for, obviously, Emacs itself, the mailing list that we use, and the media.emacsconf.org server, where all of the presentations are currently hosted. We'd also like to thank Big Blue Button, Etherpad, Icecast, OBS, The Lounge, Library.chat, FFmpeg, OpenAI, Whisper, the Ineos Force Alignment Tool, Site Transfer, SubD, and contributors to all of the tools and service we use in the making of this conference. And obviously, all of them are free, as Sasha obviously told you, and as we will be telling you again for many years to come. Uh, we'd also like, again, to thank everyone for attending the conference and making EmacsConf what it, what it is. And for those who were on the general track, you know, Sasha did it uh, in parallel to the last talk we had today. Uh, she did a wonderful talk on how EmacsConf is actually run. So. There's her talk. There's also an entire page on our wiki about the infrastructure that we use. So if you're interested, especially in winning an event of your own, you've got as much information as you want. And as Sasha probably told you, we are available for sharing the knowledge and enabling your dreams of making a conference. Uh, I mean, do you want to take it over the, with the fiscal sponsorship announcements? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see. Can you please scroll down a little bit? Whoever is kindly sharing the screen. OK. Oh, I was, I was scrolling on my end. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sasha. Um, yeah, so kind of super excited to finally uh, get into this. And this is something that we've been kind of hoping to get worked out for a long time, actually. And it's finally here. So um, people might have already seen this. But um, as of this uh, last Thursday, uh, we are actually uh, fiscally sponsored by the Free Software Foundation. Um, so we joined their uh, Working Together for Free Software uh, program. Um, and the FSF published the announcement on their website. You're welcome to go and check it out there. Um, but I just want to quickly get into a little bit about like what it means and, um, yeah, some of the benefits, I guess. So um, as part of this Working Together for Free Software Fund, uh, the FSF provides fiscal sponsorship for a number of important free software and uh, GNU technical projects, such as the GNU toolchain and Replicant, which is a free fork of Android. And um, you know, starting this year, EmacsConf has joined the program as well. And as, an, uh, as a fiscal sponsor, the FSF can assist us by providing services um, required by a legal entity, like signing contracts uh, and like receiving and processing payments. Um, so to provide some context, EmacsConf is and always has been uh, an independent initiative organized by a very small number of people, a small team of people without any corporate sponsors. And um, 
you know, that's important in part, in part because I believe part of our message is that, you know, we want to show, showcase that everybody can do this and organize a conference like this, no matter like how small your team is and like how modest your uh, resources are, which we will actually get into a little bit later in the closing remarks. Um, but yeah, so now having the FSF as our fiscal sponsor, uh, we're in a better position to accept donations as one potential way to contribute and uh, or like help the conference. And just to clarify, we're currently not uh, struggling at all to cover these uh, costs of the servers and such, which we will get into again. Um, but this is just like one extra avenue um, if people are feeling generous and would like to help, um, it's much appreciated. And um, yeah, so having a 501c3 nonprofit like the FSF as a fiscal, uh, fiscal sponsor, um, many donors will receive tax benefits that they otherwise wouldn't receive if they were to like donate to like individuals running a project directly. And also don donors can know that, you know, the funds that they're donating are being handled by an accountable uh, institution. And also importantly, when donating through the, through the FSF, um, just, let's see, text changing. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, people can donate without having to run any non-free JavaScript, uh, which is nice. Because unfortunately, usually these days on the web, when you do want to buy something or spend money, you have to run non-free JavaScript, which isn't the case when donating, when donating through the FSF. Um, yeah, so we just joined, as I said, on Thursday. Um, and I've, we've already received our very first donation. So we'd like to extend our thanks and gratitude to Scott Ranby, who's actually our first ever kind donor. Um, they agreed to be thanked publicly. So thank you, Scott. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is a recent development, and uh, we plan to add much more information and details about this whole situation to the wiki, um, including links to the announcement, some more information about the program and our donation page, of course, um, in the new in the near future. And um, in the meantime, I'm also happy to help answer any questions as best as I can. So feel free to ping me on IRC or just email me at bandalia.gnu.org. Which gives me a chance to jump in and um just point out one question that we know people have is just about uh how much of the money goes to fsf when you make a contribution through the fund toward emexcom right exactly yeah and the answer to that is that uh it's 10 percent uh which is for supporting the operation of the working together program and also um the shared GNU infrastructure which we as emexcom fuse and depend on um, uh, along with uh, several hundred GNU packages. Um, so, yeah, and, and it, it covers things like transaction costs that the, uh, the FSF's payment processor charges. Um, and then again, I'll come back to say, this is a real fair price. I have some experience with working with payment processing and things like this and like 10% that's a that's something that you see in bigger businesses that have a model around making money on that transaction so to be able to do that as a nonprofit, we're taking advantage of a really awesome thing there yeah exactly and um yeah just for a quick plug the fsf is actually doing an end of year fundraiser right now um so if you want to uh, go donate to them or if you donate to us um a part of it will uh, go to the fsf to support um, their work on um, on free software, helping grow the movement and uh, yeah, spread the word about it. So thank you. And I guess now is a good time for me to pass the baton to um, the next organizer who wants to talk about some of the specs of the servers that we use right now. We actually don't have to go about this in detail. I just put it in there in case people were curious about how much it takes to run something like this. Not a lot. Uh, it's just really, you know, two days of, of computing is not that expensive in today's world. And all the rest is just volunteer time and, um, and a heck of a lot of Emacs lisp as previously discussed in our presentation. <laughs> So we will just skip through that instead of reading all of it. Unless people are specifically curious, you can ask questions afterwards. But yes, happy birthday, uh, EmacsCon. And here's another wonderful 10 years. All right. I think we are at the end of the closing remarks. Uh, have I forgotten anything? We haven't heard Flowey yet, I believe. Sorry for putting you on spot again.
<laughs> I guess I have nothing really to say besides what you have already said. So thank everybody to make a presentation, to do anything here. Thanks for all of you to, that I could be a part of it. I have to admit it also. So thank you all and yeah, nothing to say yeah. probably. And I also want to like send the thanks to Floy for you know uh, stepping in. We kind of like throw this on you like at the last second, but Floy actually stepped in and hosted uh, graciously a couple of the talks on the dev track today. So um, which I think went very well. So congrats and thank you. Thank you. Speaking of which, we were not monsters. We kindly asked Floy yesterday because everything was going so well, and now we can say it. You know, I can say things are going well. Usually, it's a bad thing, you know, when you're doing a broadcast to say things are going well right now because it tends to backfire at some point. But yesterday, hours you know, of notice, hours of notice. That that's planning. Right. So hours of notice. Flo, we didn't sleep all that much because we. I tasked him with hosting, so he was turning in his bed all night thinking, oh, I'm going to host him at Scons. But Floey, uh, you did a wonderful job, and I am so glad that not only you were able to join us again this year, but that also you were able to host. Because last year, had we asked you to host, you would have said no. The first <laughs> answer we asked you this year was yes, but give me some time to think about it. <laughs> Next year, it is yes, completely. So, If we've done a good job, it will be yes directly. All right, so since we are at the end of the thankings, and I did say uh, Europe team needs to go to bed in about 12 minutes, that leaves us about 12 minutes to try to answer as many points as you'd like to raise. Uh, Sasha, I think the Q&A room is still open because we are technically still in the Emacs conference currently. So if you, uh, we might, we're going to put the link again if you need to find it, otherwise scroll up and find the one on dev. I, uh, I think I can, I, can, uh, I can change the redirect. Maybe. I, I will go figure this out. Uh, keep talking in the background. Right. So uh, whilst we figure this out in the background, uh, it would be nice if you could join us and ask questions, either by dropping them. I see plenty of people have already la left some comments. Uh, we have two places. Right now, it's more about a chit chatty chit chatting about the end of the conference. If you've got general feedback, uh, we've mentioned it at the top. But you know, if you want to write your general feedback here, it will find its way at some point in the years of the relevant people who can make things change. So. Don't worry too much about where you put your feedback. It'll be fine. But now, how about we start reading some of the uh, notes that people have said or questions? So have here's asked. one for Amen. Uh, uh, do you have any stats on how many people watched were in IRC and BBB over the two days? Right. Um, yeah, so f I guess for um, Icecast, which I can answer uh, more readily, um, I think yesterday we were averaging around uh, 240, 250 uh, concurrent viewers at a time. Um, and today, um, so, so today it varied. Um, I think the maximum was again like around two, 200 to 20 ish, uh, with the average being more around 180, 190 viewers. Um, we've had a lot of hits to the uh, actual web pages for like the MaxConf Wiki or the pad which are all being served on one server. Um, I pulled some numbers. I'm not sure if they're correct. So I'm like a little bit hesitant to discuss them. Uh, safe to say they're easily in the tens of thousands, um, maybe in the hundreds of thousands of like total visits um, over the past, I guess, 48 hours. Maybe the pad makes, makes a lot of small requests. Right, OK. so. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm hesitant to say, but yeah, easily in the thousands or tens of thousands. So, uh, you know who you are anyway in the crowd. You know how many you are. You do not need exact numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't have the exact numbers, but I guess it's always kind of fun to maybe try to pull some numbers and look at it that way. But you know, of course, we all know that all you know what we do. Um, every single person counts. So. Um, I don't know, trying to like look at like turning people into abstract numbers doesn't isn't I don't know inspiring to me very much, but it's it's cool. So all right, so how about we go into the questions? So Sasha is now in the viewport uh, where we can see some questions. So how about we take some of them? Uh, I can read them, or if any one of the organizers wants to do this, so, you know, feel free, especially those who haven't talked a whole lot this year. Cohen, do you want to try it? I didn't make my motive clear. I did, and I'm done. 
I took the first question. I picked the bottom question off the list because I knew exactly who it was going for. The person who wants to answer or direct the next question is welcome. <laughs> Sorry, I could have uh, given a little better stage direction there. I'm not prepared to well, answer how many Emaxers are from Nordic countries other than to say definitely yes and several. And um, I haven't, haven't looked close enough at the suggestion yet. Right, okay. Uh, I can take the question about the BBB limitations. So it's the second one, the red one. Uh, small suggestion, likely out of your control. But anyway, BBB button seems to be to work very well, but it would be a bit more watchable if the webcam frames were lined up vertically on one side because it would allow the screen share frames to be larger and would make much better use of the view viewable space. Maybe worth a bug report to upstream. And I agree. Um, BB BBB has been really good. Oh, I mean, did you want to say something? I'm going to continue, and then I'll add something at the end. OK, sure. So BBB has been really good for us. Uh, you know, It allows us to have many parallel rooms, which are all recording uh, service side at the same time. And it's wonderful for us, because we can gather. At some point, I think last year, we had four concurrent talks being recorded, because people were just so interested in what was going on in rooms. And you know, we only, like this year, the co-organizers, it's the five people you see in a room currently. And if we had all of us to be in a separate room, having to record it on the machine, it wouldn't work. So we are able to demultiply the amount of content that we produce thanks to BBB. But sadly, we are also quite limited by the interface of BBB. Another problem that is dear to me is that audio tends to be uh, fairly bad at some points, depending on the speakers, because BBB has really funky uh, audio correction stuff going in the background. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And especially on the machine, uh, the specs are uh, above in the document if you're interested. But BBB and OBS do not play well at all. You might have heard me uh, speaking with some clicks in my voice at some point. That's another problem with BBB. Anyway, I mean, you wanted to add something as well. Right. Yeah, I kind of um, empathize and um, also emphasize the pro uh, problems with audio on BBB sometimes. But about the specific suggestion here of like, you know, lighting things up, at least visually, um, I think that's like much more doable. Um, even if you don't open a bug upstream, I believe uh, the Free Software Foundation for their Libra Planet conference, either last year or the year before, they had some custom like client side in the browser, custom CSS where it would do exactly something like that. It would like enlarge um, the um, the shared screen on the one side and then stack up all of the webcam feeds on one side. So uh, we might be able to use something like that. So I'll tack on to that. Um, and, and now I feel like a heel as soon as I open my mouth because I think I, I almost get the sense Floy wants to jump in here and we're all talking, everyone except Sasha who actually wrote OBS uh you know the obs websocket plugin that is probably the answer to all the different questions everyone is bringing up so i guess i'll leave my input at that and chloe did you have anything to say or can we pick on sasha <laughs> nothing to say uh i need to update the obs websocket plugin for the protocol change because that i think the protocol change was like from four to five because <laughs> one of those things that i haven't gotten around to cool but uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll try to solve it in CSS. So uh, if I, I can I can tinker with the CSS, or if somebody else would like to volunteer to uh, to move things around, then that would be fantastic because front end should be things. Okay. Uh, oh, what order of magnitude hours do you, each of you think you devote to the conference yearly? I have I, I expected someone would uh, ask this question, so I have. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have my uh, uh, the past 11 years of time analysis. Uh, uh, this is my Emacs category, so it also includes Emacs news. So this is my Emacs hours by month and year. So you can see last year, uh, it spiked up a lot, but this year has been, you know, it has taken less time. So last, last month, it was about 93 hours. And the month before that was just about 87 hours of prep. And this is this actually includes things like captioning and uh, and coordination. And then you can see a little bit in time of time here, are like the Emacs news and and uh, harvesting Q and A and um, adding chapter index indices and things like that. So uh, 
I like it. It's it's my form of fun. Um, otherwise, I'm mostly just you know uh, helping the kiddo go to play dates and carrying things around and, and you know. So, so this is this is the stuff that I do to keep my brain happy. Uh, and if you're wondering, okay, well, do you sleep? Uh, that is the next question I expected people ask. Uh, the answer is yes. We still actually do manage to sleep, or at least I do. Uh, <laughs> less so now that I you know, have a kid. This is like 2016, had a kiddo, and then suddenly much less sleep, but still a reasonable amount of sleep. So. Emacs stuff happens, I can still sleep, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> now that's data for you folks. Yeah, I mean, we can't top that at all. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's a blog post a, also. Yeah. See? Blog especially post. you start like this. How do you expect all of us to say anything after this? So whatever we say <laughs> is not going to be backed up by data. It's not going to be as many hours, and it's still going to be as qualitative in general. So. <laughs> <laughs> Data. Uh, I, I can remark on something because for me it's my fourth year uh, helping to organize Emacs Cons, and there's a definite definite change this year. Uh, I did spend usually I get into Emacs Cons mode in late September when I start worrying about the CFP, the call for proposal is finishing, and then we need to start running after speakers to secure the proposals to make sure. Oh, can you do this? Uh, can you do maybe a 10 minutes format instead of a 20 minutes format? You know, all this jazzy stuff. And usually it kind of looks like Sasha for me in terms of uh, involvement, or at least it did for the previous year. But this year, now that I've been gainfully employed as a software developer, I found it much harder to find the time to invest into MaxConf. But one of the things that allowed me to still stay efficient at my day job is the fact that I knew that Sasha and all the work that we did in previous years would come to help us organize this year's conference. And I'm not kidding, this year, I've been keeping an eye, obviously, and we've been chatting with all the organizers, but it's mostly been Sasha holding the fort from the end of the CFP in September to right about end of November. So I'll use the opportunity, as well, my uh, fellow co-organizers will, to thank you, Sasha, for putting so much time and energy into this. Oh, not only Sasha from this year, but also Sasha from last year and last year and last year. And I will not be able to give you a figure of how much time it takes. I can tell you that the two days of Emacs Cons are a bloody marathon because we cannot share you all, your we cannot share our screens with you. But Sasha has given you a little bit of pointers about you know how much stuff we need to monitor. Sasha just switches constantly between workspaces. I just put everything on one workspace, and my screen looks absolutely mental. And then I wonder why my microphone is clipping on BBB. I suppose. All right, that's all for me. Anyone wants to say anything about how much time it takes? Well, Sasha, please. I have a nice setup this year because uh, I actually have a I, Matthew lent a, donated a computer to me that can handle the big monitor, and I like I'm stealing my husband's uh, big monitor over there. See, so this is my setup today. Uh, it's a uh, it's got like conference stuff on my laptop, and then the, just IRC on the other big screen, and the 480p, so I can see I can make sure it doesn't fall down. Uh, yes, so I have a nice setup today. Nice. Uh, anyone wants to comment about how much time it takes for them to organize Emacs Conf or to, you know, including everything, be it the brainstorming, the answering volunteers and stuff like this? Or we can move to another question, otherwise. I mean, I know for myself, I kind of dropped the ball this year somewhat um, unintentionally or un well, yeah, I didn't have any other choice, basically, at least in like September through like early November or mid November. Um, but um, I think like it sort of differs, I guess, from like year to year. Sometimes life happens and, um, you know, no matter like how much you would love to put uh, a ton of time into something, you just can't. And maybe next year you can do it a lot more. Um, so I'm optimistic I'll be able to put in much more time uh, into things for your max comp next year. But that's just me. Uh, I just want to say something before Colin jumps in. Sasha, go, please first. Uh, and I think people shouldn't like feel bad about having. I think designing conference systems so that or, or processes so that they can take advantage of little pockets of time uh, is is the way to go. I love the fact that we now have a system where hosts can show up on the day of and and just rock it right. So this is great. It's just, it it is good that it can we can get by with less time throughout the process 
and just take advantage of whatever time people have. Whether it's, you know, they've got two hours, they want to caption a talk, that sort of stuff is, is already totally awesome. And yeah, well, you both did. Go on, go. You both, thank you. Uh, you. Yeah, you both stole my thunder and then put a quarterback in me. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with everything you said. That's something that just uh, typifies what is amazing about this conference, right? It's it's a kind of accessibility, isn't it? Having the having some work I can give you that helps you give back to your community that is at your level, that uh, fits your time budget, that uh, that is something that you're willing to go care about because it intersects, you know, the world you live in in some practical way and therefore you can make time for it or, you know, what I, we all live in a lot of different trenches and, and making them intersect is one of the things Emacs does in a technical way um, and through this conference, at least, in a, in a very community way. Um, Okay, and it brings me back also on the OBS front, and I think that's what really excited me too. When I think about the potential that's out there, and you know, uh, get, you know, getting a bunch of people looking at uh, the work you've already done with OBS WebSocket, and thinking about, you know, oh, we want more timers that count things down, and we want each organizer to be able to have a little palette of them. Some of which are going to be handed to you by the conference director, and some of which you can add yourself because they help you, and that's right, and. Uh, you know, have you know, keeping things really fast and loose so we can make the artistic decisions on the fly that make our conference what it is, but then um, making you know a simple automated tool chain that anyone can learn and that we know how to execute the steps of manually. That's that's the actual design pattern that you've implemented here that's working so well. So the one thing I wanted to add about Amin saying, oh, I've dropped the ball this year. Uh, Amin's, just to be clear with everyone, Amin's definition of dropping the ball is securing a sponsorship with the FSF. So that's dropping the ball for you. Well, attending um, a week a weekly meeting, we take one week off a month where we coordinate infrastructure issues with uh, between this and other, uh, you know, FSF supported projects using quote unquote GNU infrastructure. That's kind of a GNU is really an umbrella term once you get kind of close to it. You know, it's like GNU is all of the volunteers helping with this vision we have of user rights. Mm. One last thing I wanted to add about how much time we spend on this. It's just the fact that we've experimented over the four years I've been part of this. You know, we the first year we had so many meetings because we thought this would be the way to know one another and this would be the way to create qualitative notes. And we've come That is what time. I saw. I can't help but interrupt you again. This is all I do, Leo. This is why I keep off the microphone until the last 20 minutes of the conference. Once everybody already wants to hang up, then I know you'll be honest with me. But I have to say, when I looked at that table of data, all I saw was 200 hours of Sasha's life that she spent talking to the, you know, all many of us were involved. It's not just the four or five of us that, you know, that have done this last two years convention, right? It's, you know, there's there's been many people that have come in, shared, shared wise thoughts, helping us form the, I don't know, ethos or, or all of the things that we're carrying forward uh, into 2024. Sorry, Leo. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I mean, uh, you pretty much continued with what I was going to uh, talk about. So um, I'm, I'm looking at the time, and I've already <laughs> extended by five minutes the amount of time I was supposed to stay. And Flowey is looking at me with a very uh, teary eyes because he's thinking about the meeting he's going to have at 9 a.m. tomorrow, as will I, by the way. So Yeah, don't you have to be commuting like right now, Flowey? I mean, aren't you supposed to be... <laughs> Do you get to? I hope you get to sleep before work. Thank you so much for uh, your awesome work this year. I mean, I didn't do so much at the Eames conference, so I'm just here. Like from Friday at first, I was looking at the on the website which talks we are having. So it's all fine. So maybe next year or the coming year, I can do a little bit more. But we will see. <laughs> a little more, like again, like with Amin, Flowey's definition of doing, uh, not having done much, is hosting one of many of the dev talks so <laughs> you could probably find to worry about it 
All right, folks, uh, considering the question that we have right now, we, you st we still see people adding questions, but I think we are all pretty tired and we need to get on with the rest of our weekends or nights. So do I go into parting words now, everyone? Are we okay with this? I'll take this for a yes. On a Sasha, yeah? Oh, I, I think I basically have until the kiddo yells at me to come for dinner so I can hang out with people after. All right, splendid. Go ahead and do the wrapping up. But I know. Right. I'll, I'll do the wrapping up for the perhaps the stream. We might leave it up because there's no uh, impetus for us to close it. But at least to officially close while we're still there, uh, EMAXCOM 2023. I will have, again, to thank everyone, all the speakers, all my co-organizers for making this possible. Uh, you've seen all the care that we put into it, and we are glad every year that all this work is doing something in terms of community building, in terms of uh, leading more people to join us every year as speakers or just join us as user of Emacs. And it's always a pleasure to organize the conference, to host it, and to work with everyone in the room currently. Uh, Corinne and I are constantly joking when we are backstage making jokes. It, it, it's the, I think it's Corinne we said last year during the closing remarks that there was no other place that you'd rather be than in a backstage. And for me, even though many things have changed in my life, you know, over the last year, many good things have happened, it's good to come back to EmacsCons as this milestone and say, oh yeah, I'm exactly where I want to be, with the people I want to be with. And I see myself, and I cannot wait to see myself again in the situation next year. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, if you want to join us, ask questions. We'll still be here for a while. Uh, Flo, you might drop out. I might drop out. Sasha might drop out. But we'll be here to answer as many questions as you want for as long as we can. Bye-bye, everyone. And let's get started with the after show. Now. Bye, Leo. Bye, Flory. I'll drop out eventually when the kiddo yells at me. <laughs> I can't tell you how much fun this is. Yeah. Well, the way to remember what I said, Leo, it's 100% true. Oh, man. Turning off your lights. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, too. Sorry, y'all. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye, lights. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's uh, every year. That's how we finish. We just turn off the uh, the big lights that we have in our faces all the day, especially with the host. And uh, tell me if there's too much uh, back chatter when I um, get off my headphones too, so I can hear you in the room. Can you hear me? Can I hear you now? Hello. hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Is it feeding back pretty bad? I think I there is some echo. Yeah. It, there is some echo. Okay. Fine. I can live with my headset a little longer. I'll give one ear a break at a time. Thanks for your sacrifice. Oh, well, you know, it's a small, small, small price to pay to get to snooze with y'all. Um, yeah, I was just looking at that chart and I was thinking about all of those meetings that we had. Like 18 months, we were just on this death march to organize this. And uh it's just such an amazing accomplishment that you you have here sasha like i'm sorry to pick on you personally but the work that you put in keep being able to keep it the whole technical project in your mind all the way down to presenting it at this year's conference and like kind of spoon feeding it to people that want to run off in their own damn direction and then handing them a an org is the one that keep people keep bugging us about so if you're looking for a project here it is you know like just really well done like the whole like it's just um i no longer feel like we wasted a lot of time there like i mean you remember i i enjoyed so much all of our check-ins and all of that stuff but we had so many ideas you can imagine that i wondered <laughs> you know i wondered if we should have had more focused meetings and all that and i was glad when we stopped having like weekly meetings because you know what I mean? To keep this much power in the room once a week, you know, it feels groovy. <laughs> you know, this much intellectual power. Like, anyway, yeah. there, I did that for me. <laughs> yeah, and I'll say, I mean, I can't obviously uh, speak for Sash or anyone else. Um, yeah, the, the regular meetings were a little bit intense uh, when we had the year before, but uh, I'm kind of also super glad that we did do them. And, um, you know, in, in a way, it did 
help us sort of connect and get to know each other um, sort of much more regularly or much more, um, which is great. And I see thumbs up from Leo and Corwin. So yeah, happy we did them. Um, might want to like, you know, have some kind of actually irregular ones every once in a while if we have to like decide on something. But, you know, if like this year, everything can be worked out pretty much ad hoc whenever needs be like over asynchronous communications. I see Sasha nodding <laughs> very excitedly. Um, this also works. So um, yeah, and I'll see, and I, I also see some questions coming in here um, in BBB. If other folks want to join, please feel free to do that as well. Um, yeah, I don't think we have an issue tracker um, right now, but you know, our whole website is, is a wiki. So if you want to like create a new page or um, there might be a page, I don't know, um, you can, of course, go on and edit it to your heart's content. Um, yeah. Hilarious. I couldn't, like, I almost managed to type that as fast as you could say it, you know. That's fine. Right. I, I give the same answer in the chat. Yep. Our website's a wiki, and we right. can definitely use ideas here if you want to implement them or, you know, document them enough that uh, even Corwin can code it, then, you know, I'll do that. Else, I'll go through all the etherpads at some point to harvest them. I, I think I have, to, yeah, I have an Emacs list function that does this for me, uh, so that uh, I can go through that and, and include that in our organizers' notebooks, lessons learned, and ideas for next year. Yeah. Yeah, because something that you know we were talking about the different models between having many many meetings and how it paid off eventually. The thing is, this year we had no meetings. We met uh, Friday morning on mumble and we were ready to go we did chat things up a little bit on isc obviously but no meeting this year so i'm tempted to say that yes we can have offhand meetings but i think it's mostly because we want to see one another not because we need necessarily uh for those meetings to prepare emacs cons but um what i wanted to say as well is that I think it's a testament to the bet that Sasha took last year to automatize a lot of things. I mean, we'd already been automatizing a lot of stuff, like writing scripts for every single thing in years prior. But last year, we made a big bet to say, what if we had OBS in the cloud? What if we had a streaming platform that was running on a machine? And this is what allowed us to very smoothly have two tracks, the general track and the dev track. And I think the beauty of this system is that obviously because we get more and more speakers submitting talks we are starting to think maybe we actually need a third track or something and no one is stressed in the room when sasha says this you know there's not the uh the reaction that say oh no it's gonna be tough we're gonna need more hosts or organizers it's just a call now a point of order now flowy is stressed when sasha says this <laughs> <laughs> That was just a. I, I don't know, Carl. When we could put you on the spot next year, you'd be like, you know, hey, Carl, yeah. what do you feel about hosting? <laughs> you know, I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. Um, and I feel, I mean, just to jump in there and say, yes, exactly. No, but no, there's no concern on the part of the organizer committee that we could expand this. If if you said we needed to expand to four tracks, I think we would gulp and consider it. You know, from there it gets a little crazy, but strictly because there aren't that many people that we know want to commit. What did, what did we see there? 80 hours of potential work that, you know, that could go into organizing next year's conference if you find that it's a rabbit hole for you and being a streamer means you want to read every email and respond to every, as Sasha has done this last year, right? So when I look at her numbers for total pr participation, that's really a high watermark. Sasha really took care of of this convention you know like you know like a producer might and um and that and the fact that what used to take 200 hours before i mean i can't harp enough on how, how the story that that's telling you right and it like as i think about it with a project manager hat on right i'm saying okay well that's um you know, that work can potentially be amplified to many thousands of hours of work considering the automation and the potential for bringing people in. So if you thought about it as a money-making thing, if we were trying to make money by having these conventions, you would think we have a very profitable business here because kind of we can amplify the talent that walks in the door really effectively, if that makes sense, through the tools and the training. 
So, so we should we should clarify that if anyone wants to volunteer as a host or, or just check in, let's let's just talk host. It's really just a matter of showing up, making sure your BBB works, so you can you know you can talk. If you want to share your webcam, you can. You can skip it if you don't want to. You can share the screen with the pad, and then you just sit there and you chat with a with a speaker and you read them questions off the pad in case they don't read the questions off themselves. So it's it it can be a very low effort low stress way to get into it and just there kind of helping the speaker have somebody to talk to so it doesn't have to take EDRs it can take two hours and that's cool and the same and that's just like the transcription task yeah sorry I probably missed the lead there right every individual part of this is really easy so you you know it's an open-ended commitment to come and kind of meet a part of the committee a part of the community right to come in and say you know maybe you're really excited about org you could review talks and just review the org ones there's not an obligation that says you're going to look at every talk that's submitted right share your thoughts on the talks that you have a chance to review the proposals that's the submissions review part right so there's a way to help with uh, almost any appetite for I'd like a little extra work in the Emacs department here like if you want to feel like you're part of the team this this team is really easy to get involved with and I think that's sort of the... I mean please go ahead Leo no no please I've talked enough <laughs> well I don't get tired of hearing you talk but um, <laughs> um, yeah I was gonna say um... <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's the general message here is that um, we're all just a bunch of people who are, you know, interested in this. And um, um, of course, being humans, each of us have different kinds of lives and different kinds of availabilities and different kinds of interests. And there is something for everybody, um, both in terms of the kinds of tasks that, you know, need doing, um, but also in terms of the amount of time that you want or are able to put in. Um, so yes, if, if you are, if you do think this is something that you might be interested in uh, helping with for like future editions and such, or even some of the post conference work that needs doing after this year, um, please reach out. There's something for everybody and yeah, we'd love to have you. I can f confirm there was an easy access. So I came here last year, just doing some checking in and the process of getting, let's call it trained in was really, really short. There was a lot of documentation, how to do something. I mean, there's a pad that uh, gets, gets sent and what to do, when to do, and what to ask is like really incredible. So thank you for that. Um, just come here, write into, uh, write, write an email, um, join us. It's really, really cool. And uh, it's a great experience to be honest. Thank awesome. you. And while Sasha is speaking about the update of the wiki, oh, Colin, did you want to say something? No, I was just, I was just going to embarrass Flowy Coder further. But you go, you, you go ahead. No, I, no, yeah, I am very happy to yield the floor for embarrassing. By I, I just, I think I was just going to say, I, th I think you're pretty quick. You're pretty, pretty quick. You took to it really quickly. You're, you show just kind of a reflexive calm. Like you know how to not talk over people. You're already better at it than I am. Uh, no, you. You know, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I hope you're enjoying the new stuff that you're starting to take on because you seem to be doing great with it. And uh, yeah, I hope you're not sitting there thinking that you're taking, you know, the, that, you, that you're coming on, that, that you're not taking on enough responsibility or anything like that. Or you, I, I don't know, maybe I, I, I picked up like a little undercurrent of like, uh, I don't do that much. And I hope you, I hope you don't feel that way because I, just enjoy it really uh, having your um, having your help the last couple of years. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's how they get you, you know. They just tell you, Oh, could you do check ins? Like I showed up four four years ago saying, Oh, I'd like to help and <laughs> look at me now. I think I, I did I host on the first year? I'm pretty sure I did. Like it took two months basically of onboarding to convince me to do some of the hosting. And back then, oh, it was so tough for us to do the hosting because we didn't have all the fancy setup we have this year. And we were struggling with OBS, with bit rates, with sharing scenes. I'm glad we are where we are today, where I don't have to worry as much about this. But it's also nice. It's also one thing. Uh, we do have a culture of documentation as Sasha exemplified and like 
Flo, you mentioned documentation on the roles. Yes, we did do this to help people join us. Um, but really, you know, I'm the host of General, but it could be just anyone else because we have so much documentation on how to, how to do things. Obviously, when a core organizer is doing a role, we tend to have an eye on how the infrastructure is going. But really, if you want to join us, we will make sure that the jobs that you have, first, you like them, and it's something that interests you. And we will also make sure that on our end, we everything goes well for you. Like we'll be monitoring the streams. And every time we have a new person join us, it is as much energy and disp mental disp uh, availability to invest into, oh, maybe we could do this. Oh, oh, we have a fire going out because the speaker hasn't uh, checked in yet. So it's all about sharing expertise. It's all about making people level up uh, in terms of skills that are really useful. Uh, you know, I, I, I will... Uh, attribute a lot of my success in public speaking to the work I do with Emacs Cont. And I'm sure plenty of people uh, would gain from um, joining us and learning the skills. All right. Uh, it's about uh, 30 minutes past the official time. Do we want to go a little longer? Are we still available to go? All right. Well, let's keep going. Um, I don't see any more people joining us on Big Blue Button. We have Bob, who was one of the speakers today, in the room. Uh, Bob, do you want to maybe unmute yourself and ask us some questions? Or just thank us. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. begging for something, but I know you've yeah. been very helpful. Hey, guys. How are you? No, you I've, I've really had fun. No, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted for you, I think. Um, so I, I I learned something. You know, everybody wants to record their videos, which of course is great, and then you have the subtitles and everything. But I, I saved a lot of time by doing it live <laughs> this year and not going in and tweaking and doing all the editing and spending all the time that we do. And it, and it was kind of fun to do it that way too. So uh, just a little note there. But um, you know, I look forward to seeing one of my talks subtitled someday. <laughs> Um, so, uh, no, I love what you do. It's fun. I, I've only seen part of Sasha's talk, so I'll go and review that about how you're automating all this. Um, you know, it's a little sad for me personally that, of course, uh, org gets all the attention, but, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're exposing hyperbole more now, and uh, it's, there's definite growing interest on Reddit, and you know, I think it's kind of like Emacs Conf. Give it, give it a few years. We went away for a long time, and then we came back. So, uh, we'll we'll start to see it uh, permeate the the Emacs first. But I was thinking that, you know, I think people who like Emacs and stuff, they they read things online. They they come to this conference, but we're always hearing about well, the next generation. We have to deal with that. And I think a lot of people get exposed to Emacs in college. You know, a professor turns them on to it and makes them use it. And then they go out into the real world and there's no encouragement anymore. And they just drop it. And with all of what you're putting together here, it seems like if there was some reach out to universities uh, and college students, uh, you know, we might get a whole new big crowd of people coming in, um, you know, just as I, I think org has really attracted a lot of uh, people in the sciences, um, since that's what it was originally developed for. Um, so just a thought, you know, maybe if you get any volunteers who can help in, in the reach out or just, you know, sending things around to universities, that might really uh, extend who gets exposed to this stuff. Yeah, I think that's a great and very interesting idea. Um, and it sort of touches on a couple of different things, sort of like you mentioned, well, with org, it sort of really drew in the sciences folks. Um, um, it would be interesting to see like other parts of Emacs doing that for other like kinds of communities, but also like specifically, I guess, for college and colleges and universities. Um, yeah, it would be cool. Uh, if we had like local groups or local meetups, because I mean, so far right now, I think the most common ones are like by city, like for example, a Toronto Emacs meetup or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, if you could maybe encourage or help foster um, a university level type of thing, um, you know, University of Fla uh, Blah, uh, Emacs group or something like that. And, um, you know, seeing what their needs would be or trying to think also what features of Emacs would be very useful in an academic academic slash educational setting. Um, yeah, lots of lots of food for thought there. So thank you for mentioning this. Sure. And uh, I, I guess, yeah, OBS is coming up here. I, I worked with that a bit, yes, last year. You know, another powerful piece of software with a sort of, a, I think, a weak user interface, <laughs> you know, for the, the newbies coming along on it. And maybe, you know, if there's, if that's kind of what people use figuring out or putting some information in the wiki uh, about how to do that, uh, you know, work with it or. Uh, oh, good idea. Um, I can comment. It is definitely the parent, the preeminent streamer software out there well beyond the free software community. Uh, it's used by most streamers on Twitch and other like, commercial for-profit things, but of course those companies are making money off people trying to give money to the streamers. Those streamers aren't getting any software help. So actually most of them are dependent for their income uh, on free software like OBS and OBS in specific or by some kind of forked brand name uh, is the, the primary tool. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Stefan has joined us right now in the room. Mm -hmm. Not putting you on the spot. If you want to stay muted, you can. Oh, you have muted yourself. I, I managed to click the unmute button. Yes, I'm here. How are you guys doing? Doing good, surviving here. Doing great. Hey, late your time. <laughs> really amazing work uh, organizing the conference. I really have to congratulate everyone. So I just hopped on here to sort of say that I'm extremely impressed. And I think this is an example to, to follow uh, for, uh, for other conferences and, and for Emacs in general. I think we need more, more of this community type organizing and just you know, uh, getting people interested and involved on all kinds of levels can only help uh, Emacs. Because I mean, we are in this for the long haul and that's it. Oh, what a great point. I mean, that's, if I can comment, that's one of the things that drew me to trying to contribute to free software when I was a kid, like we're talking now 30 plus years ago, the idea like, and I recognized it from Stallman's initial manifestos on the topic, right? He was clearly in this for the long haul. Like I am building the library of Alexandretta here and like linking the work that we're trying to do to community that I don't know how you could touch my heart you know, more surely, because that's, that's exactly what we want to do, not necessarily any given talk or comment, but the idea that we have to get together and share our ideas and the place that we do that has to be just has to be a, a buffet and not a crucible. And look, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, really, when we're looking at Emacs and sort of what we have achieved. And the galaxy of talent that exists in the Emacs community is also like truly <laughs> impressive, I think. So there's a lot of work to be done, uh, but we've also achieved some some pretty uh, impressive things so far. So let's just keep at it. And, you know, I'm I'm sure we'll have a f fantastic future for uh, Emacs. Here, here. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm kind of interested while Stefan's here. Um, you know, the just the common tropes that that go around. Like, uh, I just hear it so much on the net. You know, is Emacs still alive? Do people still use it? You know, and of course, it's like you have an older piece of software that started so long ago. People don't realize that it's still up, but it's also because of the trends, right? 
you know, we've got the electron based uh, development and, and Visual Studio is slick out of the box. So what's what's uh, in the core Emacs developers realm? Obviously, you guys are taking this longer term perspective, which makes sense. But what do you think about this issue, the shorter term and, and how to uh, alleviate those concerns that some people represent? Of course, yes. I mean, this is something that, I mean, clearly people are discussing. And as you say, it's almost like a trope at this point. And uh, it's been discussed in Emacs Devil. What can we do you know, to, to promote Emacs more? And to what extent should we uh, care about that? Uh, and I, I mean, my reply to that is is usually just, you know, the rumors of my death are uh, very <laughs> uh, And I think this is true also for uh, Emacs, right? So we are uh, very much here. I think what has happened also is like reflective of uh, basically that there are just more programmers on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. And we haven't been able to sort of catch that segment as it's been growing, but also we have more Emacs users, I think, today than, than probably uh, ever before. We have more packages, we have you know more stuff going on. So I, I think it's a, it's a, a challenge as well, like to what extent do we want to be like a niche and to what extent do we want to be the text editor for uh, for uh, programmers. And, and I think there's there's a tension there because we want to stay true to what Emacs is and to its sort of core values of what makes Emacs great. But can we still, uh, you know, uh, make some changes to sort of uh, stay stay relevant? And I think that's that's a huge uh, win. And clearly these discussions are going on uh, in, in on Emacs level and, you know, in the minds of core developers, I, I think uh, every day, even though, I mean, most of our work is just, you know, trying to keep uh, add the new features, you know, make sure that, you know, we have that sort of core uh, infrastructure in place, which is part of the reason why I gave the talk I did yesterday to invite more people to to come on board, because I, I see a lot of people have opinions about Emacs, which is amazing, and we need more of that. Uh, but I think, let's say, patches speak louder than words. Uh, that is the <laughs> software. And it's definitely true in Emacs development. I want to just piggyback on, like, attack the premise of the question a little bit, right? Um, remember that we are sort of in a trench warfare with commercial interests that that are dependent on dominating software ecosystems in order to exploit users for money. Like that is a necessary thing to a lot of people's business model, and so. Um, we live in a world where software is more than tools. It is clothing. And so when I put on my Mac and I put on my UI skin, I'm not just choosing whether I like sliders or radio buttons or checkboxes or the other UI mechanics that give that heuristic uh, and make it make me think it's easy to use, easy to learn to use. Right. I'm also choosing a whole line of implementation detail that I'm being actively trained not to try to understand by, you know, kind of the dark side of the force over here. Um, so when I think about, you know, make Emacs more like Toaster, I, uh, you know, one of my responses is every time that question asks you know an angel grow, gets asked an angel grows its wings a developer submits a patch uh a bug gets open that we can you know with enough information to actually do something about it the ecosystem gets better right whether a new user comes or not like somebody's actually asking a question that's going to lead them someday to pick a better tool yeah it's it's true. I mean, we have we have powerful enemies, and they are not working for us. And that when they are working on improving VS Code, you can't be under any illusion that they are doing that in the interest of the users. They're doing that in their interest of of the corporate owners. Uh, so this is the reality that we have to face. And Emacs is just not like that. Uh, and and this is uh, of course part of the reason why it's so important that we we continue uh, this work uh, for you know the future of being able to do computing in 
uh, a free way and and in a way that is actually you know supports the the types of workflows that we know and love mm -hmm. something that i'd like to add to this is that you know you've mentioned we need more programmers in the world and in light of what are we doing with EmacsConf, perhaps we need more people to be at EmacsConf talking, not necessarily programmers, but just people apprehending Emacs and talking about it. It, it feels like we've got different missions that we are trying to accomplish for this. We are okay. You have... go ahead, Colin. I I can't leave that alone. I almost came in there on the previous point. Yeah, I actually completely agree with that, Leo. That's something that, and I mean, to be fair, I owe a good, I owe Deval a good. Uh, email on this topic, but we desperately need more project managers, more solutions architect, more business process analysts, more systems analysts, more, you know, and the best techno, you know, some of the best threads start with an anal, uh, you know, uh, you know, quite a bit of an analytical work done on the part, part of an engineer who's come along and, um, but, but actually, uh, Larry Wall has this quote, right, where he says, consider three solutions and build one. And I think we struggle with that as a community because getting an A patch is a lot of work and a lot to ask for somebody. So asking asking three people to submit a patch means you're saying no to a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on the part of like two people, maybe two teams of people. And one of the clear was uh, usability and uh, user experience design. I think, uh, and not in the sense like, you know, CUA mode or, uh, you know, people don't realize that Emacs key bindings are actually ergonomic, but more, you know, like for myself, I, I did a lot of work in, in sort of bringing out it, Emacs features and, and did a lot of things creating this info doc, you know, which is sort of like Space Max or something in the old days. And, uh, but the, the process, yeah, kept a lot of that uh, from ever making it into core Emacs and, you know, just a lack of time on my part uh, to follow up. But if you had somebody, you know, who sort of coalesced all the, the technical work on, like, here's, you know, how we can put it together and make it more accessible, um, you know, I, I've seen that go a long way in, in certain environments. And uh, I imagine, you know, it's just not the experience of, you know, most people on the core team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we don't have, I mean, we're mostly a bunch, we're, we're a bunch of programmers. That's what we are, right? We don't have graphical designers or right. any of the stuff that you're talking about. So uh, we don't have really any UX experts uh, on board, so you know, perhaps that would be welcome. But then again, how how do you, how do you even fit you know the, the Emacs paradigm into what is typically taught and you know discussed in in UX? I mean, maybe there there is a way. I'm sure there are general principles and a lot that we we could learn. But then there is also like this you know we we have to stay true to to what Emacs is to some extent and what does that look like concretely? There are discussions to be had for sure. But we would definitely benefit from you know that type of you know uh, specific input. Well, I mean, like a simple example today is I looked at the conference guidelines. I always stay in dark mode, and it said, "Well, use light mode for your uh, presentation." So okay, I'll switch to light mode. Let me load a theme. So I go into all the default themes, and you know, start going through the light ones, and then I check uh, all the faces. Um, and, you know, there are at least three to five faces that have nearly invisible uh, text as a result of the, the background highlighting on them. And I'm like, you know, so there's low hanging fruit like that where people would deal with the structure of the menus, the, the actual faces, the themes, you know, that don't have to do anything affecting uh, core Emacs except you know, make the presentation uh, much better. Yeah, definitely. If people want to send such polishing patches, you know, for, for various aspects, you know, I spent some time 
uh, making a new help screen. I don't know if you noticed, I don't know how many people press control H, control H on their keyboards, but it's like new with new sections and it's sorted a little bit better. It, it didn't take much. I mean, it took a time obviously, but it's not like it's, it required some fantastic techno, te, you know, technical knowledge or, or deep expertise in Emacs Lisp to do that. It's, it's basically anyone can do stuff like that. So, so definitely if you're interested in doing that type of work, uh, you know, start discussing with us. Let's talk about what we can do and, and you know, get, uh, get doing it, really. Yeah, this is uh, exactly in line with your presentation from yesterday, Stefan, as well, because you were just inviting people who are not contributing to the core of Emacs to do so. And you were talking to package developer on Melpa, but you were also talking just uh, about the average Joe or Jane just uh, doing their own things or encountering a problem. Now, yes, we talked about, oh, you need to build master and all this, but at the end of the day, you know, low-hanging fruits like the ones Bob just described. If everyone does this at the end, you end up with something that is extremely polished. Perhaps you do not need to have a UX specialist to tell you that, oh, this two, those two colors are actually very close to one another. I think it's, uh, it's kind of a discussion about same defaults as well that you had yesterday. Ultimately, we do not need, yes, we need more programmers in the world. We want more people to use Emacs, but you don't know, like, is it going to be someone in computer science that's going to be the next giant uh, on whose shoulders we're going to stand? Is it someone we did not study computer science? Is it going to be someone who did something completely different? We do not know the prototypical user of Emacs. We have some idea about the fact that they might be using uh, you know, Emacs for their programming. But more and more, and as is evidenced by the talks we receive with Emacs Cont, it's just people doing writing or taking notes for their classes. So it's, it's really interesting to see how and to explore for us how we can give back to the core of Emacs in a way that is mutually constructive. Because again, to go back to the philosophy or the political agenda that we have is for more people to use software that is not removing the liberties. Exactly. Well, <laughs> so right, yeah. I mean, that's a good spot for me to come right back in and that's exactly where I do, right? Because that's uh, that's what it's all about. In, the ter in terms of a tool user, you know, the evolution of using tools as, as you know, these creatures have thought, uh, Emacs is fire. Emacs is the ability to learn languages, the ability to manipulate other tools. I mean, it's almost like, you know, God Emperor of Dune level, of, you know, some Frank Herbert type of powers that you have over your computer, and you are not required to understand how all those things work. So um, from a support standpoint, that puts us in a challenging position, right? I spend a lot of time on Pound Emacs and the questions that go by there, I feel bad for people that feel like they have to answer every question in, that goes by in the channel because no one could. No one can even give an intelligent answer to the, you know, everything from, hey, how do I change my default font on this operating system you've never heard of? To, you know, how do, you know, this Lisp code that's 40 lines long doesn't work. And I think it was a recent change that was made to the PKS macro. Do you agree? Right? And, and, um, and, and, and as complex as, that, or as deep as that well is, if you turn it 90 degrees, the Emacs is that kind of tool to the operating system level. It's letting me walk across to other systems, multi-hop, multi become the super user, right? And, you know, the just the power, the, the, the amplification of power there, it's like the lever combined with the, um, with the magnet, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. So um, so to I guess where we kind of jump off, where that gets stuck, right, is trying to change something like the defaults in the user experience. So I imagine, you know, we don't get one great idea about user experience. We'll get three, right? And then once again, we have to send our brave developers off to build one to three patches, some of which won't see the light of day. I think that you know, that's where the breakthroughs needed. Another uh, evolution in the packaging thought, uh, or, or maybe it's not packaging, maybe it's the compilation step, maybe it's the distribution step, maybe we want uh, the Debians of the world to deliver 
Emacs is two different pieces now, and there's a UX piece that um, we want you to package each one that you package, each one per window manager that you support, or at the intersection of each minute window manager and display manager you port. And the other one's just the server, and you don't even have to package that if I'm only offering the CLI. Or there's a, you know, like I'm making all this up, and I can't code a single thing like what I just said, but. I think that there, there's a technical opportunity that's pretty high level for technical there of just thinking about a way to accept contributions of experience with maybe a little less rigor and a little less ground into the marvel. Yeah, it makes me think of uh, somebody at work just uh, brought up pair programming and he's in love with it. He he wants to pair up and and do it, which you know it is not true of all programmers. But I said, okay, so you know, you you spearhead that. Um, if we, I think it is a very high barrier to get your patches in uh, because, of course, they need to meet the quality standard of Emacs. So if if people who are doing um, you know day to day understand that process and can do it well could work with some of the people who can't quite contribute at that level, um, but have ideas that are on the level that should go in, um, you know, pairing them up uh, could really move a lot of that forward. Uh, like uh, Lars, you know, if he's, I don't know what his, um, you know, I, I get the feeling maybe he's retired. Um, so, you know, Maybe he has some time, you know, and he's he's really good at at going back in and and saying, you know, these areas haven't gotten attention in a while, so I'm going to go kill some bugs and and look at them and and fix them up. Um, so I would think he would, he would be good um, to to do that with someone. But uh, you know, again, I've got I've got years of code um, that you know, would just require somebody to work through it to update to the latest code base and, and diff against it. But it does things like, I mean, like if anybody used R-Mail anymore, I made the summary mode of R-Mail exactly compatible key-wise with the main buffer, which it never was, and, and fixed a number of other features. Uh, Dured, you know, made operations reversible, where you mark something and you unmark it. And you can go up and down. And, you know, there are all these little incompatibilities that kind of add up across time. And they never seem to get addressed. And, you know, we could just fix them and, uh, and people would start to say, oh, this is smoother. You know, and they are getting more of that experience. Because, you know, it, it feels like the system's maybe 80, 80, 85 percent of the way there in a lot of thoughtful design, but that last 15% could be the, you know, the difference between uh, like an iPhone and an Android phone, if, you know, of usability wise. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's talk. a brilliant idea. And it probably can be applied far wider than Emacs. That's something that that FSF should consider suggesting across you know GNU packages for example like a, a matchmaking uh, project seems like something that FSF community teams should think about mm -hmm. that's so sorry yeah I was gonna say also um, I noticed that the, the name Davian came up a while ago and now we were talking about pair programming and such and um, <clears throat> mentoring maybe um, and Debian has this uh, service or part of their site or community called mentors um there's actually they have a website mentors.debian.net where the idea is that people who want to get into contributing to debian for example to package things um but obviously don't have you know upload rights right away um this is where they can go to and this is separate from like their mail, uh, mailing lists or bug trackers um they can basically build their changed packages and upload them here and then Debian developers who have commit uh, or upload rights to the Debian archive can go and review and like give them feedback or um, 
you know, ask it to change something, or if it's good, then just easily operate it, uh, upload the package right from there. And I wonder if it might make sense to have something kind of like that in like the context of Emacs or the GNU project as a whole, where we have like some kind of a like loosely defined mentoring thing where you know we could pair up people who are more experienced, who for example have commit rights in the Emacs core repository, um, to like you know match them up with someone who's just making your very first patches or contributions to Emacs or whatever other GNU package. Um, just some food for thought, I guess. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, and then I guess one feature of such a system, which would be nice, is that it, at least in terms of you know the mentors at Debian.net, it has a web UI, which um, is nice because mailing lists might be intimidating for someone who is just getting started, like in these communities. Um, um, or you know just making patches like that or just have a series of concrete like instructions like with mentors at, at debian.net i feel like it kind of can't go wrong in terms of finding the steps of figuring out like what you need to do to put together some change um which i think the same idea could apply to emacs for example as well i i think this is a good uh good point about lowering barriers and how email is a barrier to people i mean so on the one hand you have us guys on Emacs level, we're very used to the email workflow. Like we're not just using it for fun. You know what I mean? Like it, this is a workhorse. It really is. Yep. And it's it's uh, tried, it's battle tested. It has some quirks, but we know them extremely well on the other hand. So, but still we want more people involved, right? And, and we realize that, you know, times are changing as well. And people are more used to doing stuff from the web browser perhaps. Um, so we do want to move to a forge or at least start looking into that but there are some obstacles so we are looking for volunteers to do that work i'm not just saying it like we are very serious i'm very seriously asking people in the community to consider hey could you dedicate some time i mean it, it, it will take some dedication for sure it will take some time and it will take some discussion probably even you know be prepared to be frustrated at times right but if you're serious about doing that type of work then okay I'm now i believe you <laughs> cool. i'm just teasing yeah. i'm just yeah. teasing but 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 yes exactly any I, I mean it's it's not even a joke right any serious undertaking having to do with any free software project just because we are open to the entire world and we pride ourselves on trying to take seriously all input. And if it's a logical argument, then we'll go ahead and take the time to combat with you, even though the maintainer has 300 other things to do. Like, yeah, man, I, mean, I respect right. that. This, this is just the way it's, it is, right? It, it just, it's not like Emacs is, is way harder to change than you know, any other project of, of its longevity and size. It just, these things take time. Try getting a change, a change into Debian. That's an uphill battle. I don't even know where to start with something like that. That's, that's huge, right? And I have tremendous respect for the people doing that type of work because it takes dedication, it takes effort. So we, we, we really need, you know, someone to step up from the community, I think, to be a champion for something like this and, and work together with us, uh, you know, on Emacs Devil and off Emacs uh, Devil, uh, probably with me and Eli and perhaps some other people. That, that could be in, in the mail thread, then we could coordinate this type of work. I mean, I, I would be super excited if someone wanted to get the ball rolling. I, I can't do everything I wish I could. Like, I, I thought about it. Should I just put everything to the side and do this? But then, I mean, there are some there are other responsibilities as well. So so we need someone to step up. We need help here. Yeah, so, totally. Oh, good. You're going to speak. I was totally going to pick on you. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I echo um, Stefan's sentiments and that, um, yeah, in terms of like maybe experimenting with a different forge or better forge and like, you know, supplementing Savannah, um, totally. I actually did some initial work a couple months ago to get a source instance installed for the GNU project. Um, and I've done some work on and off, but then life happens, especially like from uh, like September onwards. So, but like even from earlier in the year, the project has been like semi dormant, but I have been meaning to get to that. Um, so I'm like one such person who is interested in that type of work and driving it forward. And I would love, you know, if anyone's and anyone else has the kind of time and energy and the interest to do help with something like that. 
um, yes, please reach out to all of us, um, to Emacs core developers, of course, and to myself. Um, this is something that could be very useful, not just for GNU Emacs and Emacs developers, but also for like any other GNU package um, as well. So yeah, that's like one area of potential contribution. And one thing that we sort of, I guess, regularly meet with the FSF sysadmins to discuss these kinds of projects and things as Corwin would know, so. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, you knew exactly where I was going to, and I'm glad that you volunteered yourself personally, because that's the best choice. If you're hearing this and you're thinking, you know, maybe I should do some sysop stuff, literally reach out to Amin, um, and, and, because it's complicated. There are a lot of projects to volunteer for. They're all very worthy, and uh, it's sort of political to figure out who, what we're going to try to change for whom first to demonstrate we can do all the things we want to do to make it better without losing all the things that are important about how it is today and you know we'll do it in a measured way like everybody's just like room full of rocking chairs everybody's got a long tail um it's a hard project but you will do something that just a lot like as a savannah hacker which i am with Amon, so that's how i know about his work on that project we work together on so the savannah forge i'm aware of his work uh piloting source hut uh recently and and just with a working group there to look at the next generation of forges for gnu Emacs, of course, as a GNU package, could go do its own thing. FFSF would most likely give cash to go do its own thing, even if it didn't like it. We know, you know, as a, like if I put on, I'm not FSF, but if I put on that hat, I imagine that we must know um, Emacs is a flagship thing that people in the real world depend on. If I get this ancient computer, I get uh, a working Linux distribution and Emacs. Maybe it's not Microsoft Word as a word processor, but you guys, it, you can learn a language on it for sure, you know, and you can do your homework on it and, you know, it's, it makes your, you can edit things and then you can edit your system files and teach yourself how to manage a GNU system. And you can, um, you know, so Emacs is really powerful as a practical tool. Like I keep coming back to that point when I think about Emacs, like I, I really put it as like it's an important tool on the like humans inventing tools level just because it lets me make this editor into whatever I need it to be to get my actual work done, right? Whether that's getting the lint, maybe that's making the font big enough that I can see it or making it easy enough to change from this font to that font, changing the background colors, like your basic vision accessibility issues, right? All um you know solved i can bake that customization in and i can pretty much depend on no matter what we change in emacs i'm going to accept the new version it's going to be on the next computer i get i'm going to install the package and my configuration that sets all that up will be there for me right it's like back to back to stefan's point what six and a half hours ago i mean you know uh 20 minutes ago about um just uh Oh gosh, no, I lost it. <laughs> Boy, I really thought I had uh, handed that neatly back to you. Um. No problem. But yeah, I think we're in general in, in agreement. Right. If we are now in the realm of Concord, of Harmony, and the realm of Midnight in Europe, uh, should we bring this discussion to a close or we could go all night, but I'll need to explain to my employer why my eyes are barely open tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. I see all, I see some folks like starting to like slowly sign off. So. Yeah. Also, you know, you, you could leave and just miss out. <laughs> we'll you Do you in. know Leo? You what? what? <laughs> Hey, Sasha, can I say something like what an amazing job with everything you're doing in the community over the years? I'm so impressed with Emacs News. What a great resource to stay up to date in Emacs. Just really hats off to you for all of that. Thank you very much. It, it actually turned, to be, turned out to be quite timely that John Wigley had suggested it well, back when he was a maintainer because uh, when I had the kiddo, I suddenly had like zero time to actually write new things, but reading things is fine. I can, I can just speed read all the Reddit things and put the links together. So I'm very glad that Emacs News is helpful. It is. It really is. Yeah. 
So, okay, now let's try to go for our closing shot, the like closing thoughts here while, while, uh, while Leo's still here. And then if we want to keep rolling even after Leo drops, we, don't, we, we won't tell him. We'll just, we'll tell him we stop. I guess that was a beacon to me to perhaps go for the second close of the day. <laughs> I've already done, done it yeah. once. So I can do it again. <laughs> but I will prove Sasha wrong this time. I will miss out if need be because really, uh, I have been very impressed with the uh, sleep record that you had. And I am very envious right now of your past ability to sleep more than nine hours per night. And I wish I would be able to go back to this. But anyway... Uh, folks, I'm going to drop out. Uh, people might hang out for a little while longer. Bear in mind that Sasha might get called at any point to go take care of Kiddo. So this might wrap up very fast afterwards. But at any rate, it was my pleasure to be the host today. Stefan, thank you for joining. Bob, thank you for joining and uh, interacting with us and making this a little more interactive and more plural than just the co-organizers. And on that note, I will be leaving. So have a wonderful night, everyone. And we'll see you next year for the next edition potentially. Thank you, Leo. You're my hero. I take everything I said on Mumble back. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thank bye. you all. Take care. Bye. I will also say bye-bye. I also need to go to bed. Thank you all for this cool yeah. conference, and hopefully we'll hear through the year, and at least in one year. You Thank crushed you. it, mate. Rest the, re uh, rest the rest of the, the victorious. You know, you, you really stepped up. Thanks so much for... For, yeah, for your yeah. yeah, thanks so much for being a part of it, specifically you, Floy, and just everyone. Thank you all. Thanks. Then have a nice day or night, and we'll hear each other. Bye. See ya. Bye. Okay, well, I'll go next. Bye. I'm I'm the next newest, I think. Um, like, um, I, I, well, I want to say uh, also, uh, you know, Bob and Stefan, thank you so much for jumping in and participating in the closing remarks. I too think it's a lot of, like, it's, it's fun to just like share the buzz after the convention. We've got all these millions of ideas and then to have a group, a little group think about what, what we're walking away from that with, you know, what, you know, what is the temperature of the fire in your belly? Um, and it's just, I mean, this is one of the highlights of my year in a way that it's just, I don't think other people, I don't think I dare explain it to other people. I think my wife understands and that'll do. Um, so thank you very much for this conference and the opportunity to participate in it. Um, you know, just the conversation, the, how, how vibrant the, the chat is on IRC, how, you know, the, the variety of talks, you know, some of the talks that look like television content to me and other, uh, uh, others that um, look a lot like my talk. Um, <laughs> and, you know, of working through your slides and doing it live. And, you know, I appreciate that we make a place for all those levels and, um, and show people how to improve our craft as well. Totally. I'm not actually dropping or going anywhere. I'll continue to talk about Emacs until like I get the dinner time bell. I'll probably get an hour here. I'll tell you what will happen though, is I'm guaranteed to light a cigarette. You can already see me kind of hovering about my room because I'm trying to avoid like smoking on camera. I don't know where that hang up came from. I'm giving it up in approximately five seconds. So. Yeah, I'm gonna hop off. It's uh, past midnight here. I'll work tomorrow, so. <laughs> I took the next two days off. I'm actually going camping, Stefan. Like, I know I've learned that this conference leaves me completely emotionally exhausted. <laughs> I just, like, I don't know. I watch all, I, I feel like I just connect with all the Emacs. Like, it's at this time where I connect with all these people that spend as much time thinking about Emacs as I do. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so maybe we should wrap up before you have, like, you know, that... Uh, the overflow error and uh, just in in, in buffer thrill. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, let.
let us actually wrap up then. Um, everyone can find the recordings if you want to keep the conversation going. There are meetups. Uh, there are you know, people's blog posts and video channels and mailing lists and all those other things. I often I, I list a lot of meetups in the Emacs news. So that's another great way to stay connected through the year. And we hope to see everybody next year at Emacs Golf 2024. Thanks, Sasha, for the send off and goodbye to everyone. Oh, Sasha, you, I think you were muted, but yes, I was still there. I assume that's what you just said. <laughs> I lied. I, I was staying around like Corwin was. I just say goodbye, but then I wait in the bushes, waiting for the ambush, the perfect moment. Well, I'm personally right. surprised, speaking for myself. I wouldn't have guessed that would happen. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's a wrap then. Thank you, everyone, and see you next year. I thought we were clear like 10 minutes ago. Are we not? We are, right? We're definitely clear. OK, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> Good night. It was wonderful to meet you. Take care, Corwin. Bye, Stefan. Bye. Bye, all. <laughs>